Hello guys, welcome back for another video. So today we're gonna to be talking about friendships, everything that I could honestly think of when it comes to my past friendships, what I've learned, who are good friends, who are bad friends, toxicity, hate. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video and it's also a get ready with me. Subscribe down below and follow me on Instagram so you guys can always keep up with me. All right, let's talk about all the juicy stuff. Okay, so every product that I'm going to be using on my face today will be listed on the screen and down below so that you guys can keep up with each product I'm using, but we're gonna get into the tea about friendships because it's a whole topic, okay? I have been asked in several videos to talk about what it's like having adult friendships, what it means, what is different about it than being young and kind of relying on your friends for everything. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there was a point in my life where I just like wasn't super friendly anymore. Like I kind of cut ties with all my friends. I was really exuding that cancer energy, but I'm a progressive cancer now and I have friends and I'm gonna tell you guys everything I've learned from my past, my present, and what I'm gonna be doing with my friends in the future. So obviously being an adult and having friends as an adult can be a little bit difficult to maintain, but once you kind of get the routine down of how you kind of work and operate with your friends, then you're not gonna have as difficult of a time with them. Now, obviously there are some things that I maybe wouldn't have accepted years ago in myself that I accept now because I'm busy. Sometimes you can't be that cheerleader for your friends all the time. Now, obviously you'll be cheerleading for them on the sidelines, but when you have a busy life, you just can't be super hands-on all the time. But I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how to be a good friend and how to maintain healthy friendships and honestly how to meet good people to be friends with. Because I feel like a lot of you guys have asked me about how to even find friends that are on your same wavelength, who are on your path and who are just kind of glowing up the same way you are. And to be honest, I actually had a really difficult time with that growing up because I always felt like me and my friends were on just different vibes. Like we just weren't in the same headspace and it was extremely toxic and we were Butting heads quite a bit because one maybe wanted to work harder than the other or the other just wanted to like hang out and party all the time. It can just become a mess. So I first wanna talk about my past friendships and kind of what I learned from being friends with people when I was younger. So something that I always noticed about myself growing up was that I was the friend who always mended every fight. I was the person who anytime there was a disagreement, whether I was wrong or I was right, I was the one to always text first. And after a while, I started getting really aggravated by it because I'm like, why am I the only one putting effort? Like, do you guys ever feel like you're the only friend who puts in the effort? You're the only one who's texting. You're the only one that's checking in on the person. And you maybe didn't even realize that you were that person until you didn't get a text the time you needed to hear, and I'm sorry, or, oh, maybe we shouldn't have said that to each other. And you realize, wait, why am I not getting the same text that I send to them when I'm wrong. I also was a girl who only really had one good friend each time I had friends. So I wasn't somebody who had like a large group of friends growing up. I didn't honestly know how to maintain healthy friendships that way. I thought, okay, if I'm gonna be friends with somebody, then I need to make sure that I am there for them at all times. And there just wasn't any room for juggling friendships. I needed to make sure that I could be 100% there for the friend that I was close to. So I usually would have about one to two friends at a time in high school. And my friendships never really ended with, oh, she gossiped about me or this or that. It was always over a boyfriend. And to be honest, I look back and I'm like, I totally get it because sometimes when you have like a new bae and you just wanna put all of your focus into someone, it's hard to maintain healthy friendships because you don't know how to do that yet. When you become older, you find a boyfriend, you have friends, it's easier to maintain because friends know the man comes first and then when we go out, we have our girl nights, we have our date nights together and just kind of hanging out, then it's easier to juggle. I had a couple friends that burned me a couple times and it wasn't even like they were gossiping, they were just lying. And there's nothing I hate more than a liar. And I think I hate a liar and I know a liar because I used to be a liar. And it takes one to know one. And I just couldn't stand that when I evolved out of my lying stage and I just wasn't a liar anymore, I couldn't stand the lies that a friend would tell me. And it would be like stupid ones, like, oh, I was here this day, but I found out that they weren't there. And little things like that. And I just think that when I became around 18, 
years old, I just wasn't really in that place in my life anymore where I wanted to be lied to and where I could honestly tolerate somebody just being dishonest with me. So I honestly just cut off all of my friends and I just, was alone for a while. So I became a little bitter. I didn't have any friends. I obviously had my boyfriend and I was that girl who had her boyfriend and no friends. And I was that cancer. Like I'm pretty sure I made videos in the past where I was like, I don't have any friends because I just wanna work on myself and blah, blah, blah. And it was a lot deeper than that because I definitely think I would have had friends had I just been around good people or people who weren't, you know, hard to be friends with. I didn't like that when I was trying to improve. Cause if you think about it this way, when you're in high school, you don't really have anything to improve on. You're you're just kind of being that day-to-day -day person. And when I graduated high school, I wanted my friendships to be a little different. I wanted them to understand that I was, you know, juggling, wanting to become a YouTuber. I was in college at the time, I was working. I had a full life schedule. And then on top of it, I had a boyfriend and a family. And the truth is, I really just wanted to find the perfect balance. And at that time, people don't know what balance is, so they get offended when you don't want to spend all your time with them. And I just found that that was probably the straw that broke the camel's back and when all my friendships kind of just flaked out because I just couldn't be there for them all the time. And honestly, I don't regret it because if I was there all the time, I don't know if I would be here right now. After many years, and I mean many years, I evolved and I became an evolving, blossoming cancer. Because the reason why I say this is because everyone thinks that cancers, they don't wanna have friends, they don't trust anyone, which, I do think to a degree that is true. Once we um, have our trust broken, it's really hard to gain it back. But I eventually became friends with girls that I resonated with more. Girls that I felt like were on my level for once in my life. It was crazy. They were just regular girls who were just getting the bag. And for me, that was so inspirational. I read a quote the other day and it was, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to change rooms. And I thought, wow, what a profound statement. I never wanted to be the friend that always had her shit together. I wanted to be the friend who had their shit together and so did the rest of my friends and we were able to just bond over that. If somebody told me what I knew now, I probably wouldn't have been so on guard and I probably would have been more receptive to meeting friends. I definitely think I met good friends at a good age. I was in my 20s already. I was on the path of becoming successful. And I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but when you are kind of in your unsuccessful, successful phase, which essentially means you're getting to the bag, you just don't have it yet, you just don't wanna have friends. I don't know why, you're just so focused. and. I don't know, it's just one of those things and I just needed that time for myself. I was okay with it. I was okay with not having girlfriends all the time because I know me, when I'm a friend, I'm involved, I'm there and I'm present. And the problem is, is I can't be 100% present if I'm not present for myself. So I needed those years of just being alone and grinding in silence to be able to figure out, okay, what kind of friends do I want? What kind of friends do I need? And when am I going to get them? Don't worry guys, I'm going to tan my chest after this because all of my products are my summer foundation colors. So my neck and my chest do not match my face. And it is what it is, but I always tan my chest so that I don't look crazy at the end of this. But let's kind of talk about what you need to do in order to get that adult friendship that you see all the time that people have that you maybe don't have yet and that you maybe are struggling to find in people at the moment. So the first thing you need to do is you need to lower your expectations. Now what I mean by this is you need to not need people all the time. You need to enjoy your alone time. You need to enjoy what it means to just be alone. And I think that once you do this, you're going to find good quality friends. Any Anybody who is on top of you all the time and is codependent on you, I don't understand how you can get anything done and I don't understand how that can be a healthy friendship. It's just not. You need to reach a point in your life where you're kind of content with your success and you just are feeling like, okay, I am definitely in the great headspace to have a friend. I'm definitely in the right headspace to be meeting people who are on my level and I don't need somebody all the time. There's nothing worse than the friend who always calls you when they need you. They always want you to be there for them whenever something is going wrong, but then they don't even reach out to you on a day-to-day -day basis. I hate friends like that. And I don't have friends like that anymore. My friends know better. Do not contact me with help questions only. You need to check on me. We need to check on each other. We need to lift each other up. And we also need to give each other space. That's what adults do. There's nothing worse than a codependent friendship. It just looks desperate and it looks just not cute. You end up becoming toxic and then the person doesn't even wanna hang out with you anymore. Think about it. People have lives, they have parents, they have partners, they have 
jobs, they don't want to be your person all the time. Okay, let's talk about the different types of friends because when you become older, you have different types of friends. You have your good friends, you have your work friends, you have your acquaintances, and you have your family friends. And they all require a different version of you. I know it sounds exhausting, but it actually is really easy to manage. For instance, you're not going to expect your acquaintances to call you all the time. If you do, you set an unrealistic expectation, you're gonna end up being angry at them, it's gonna cause a fight. So when I think of my acquaintances, I do have actually a couple acquaintances. I have more acquaintances than I have like good friends because I get along with a lot of people and there's people who I just see in passing, but I don't necessarily talk to them on a daily basis. Now a good friend you do have to show up for. And now good friends, the, the weight that you hold as a good friend as an adult is a little bit different than when you were younger, but you still have to be there for the person. You have to call them and check on them. Don't just call them when you need them. You have to kind of be present in their life. But obviously, like I said, when you find good friends, you guys are on the same wavelength. You don't have to really fear them being upset with you because you set healthy boundaries and the person knows what to expect from you. And you kind of have to brainstorm, okay, what do I want people to expect from me? Do I wanna be someone who calls every day, which I would suggest to not be that person just because it's weird when you have to do. But anyways, that's just my point of view. But I will say that, you know, you do have to show up for gatherings. You do have to call them every once in a while. You just have to be there for someone. And that's kind of what it means to be a good friend. You want to be a listening ear. You want to be someone who's very present. You want to be someone who cares about their achievements and showing up for them whenever they need you. A lot of you guys actually asked me where to find decent friends and friends that are on your level. Now, it's actually a lot easier when you become more successful because you can just spot someone who has their life together. I would say the first and easiest way to find friends is on the internet. It's so easy to meet other girls that are like-minded. I feel like that's where I met all my friends. Even the friends that I lived in town with, we got to talking for the first time on Instagram. So I would say that even though I know them from living in the town that I grew up in or whatever, I still actually started talking to them on Instagram. So I do pay homage to that for the reason why me and some people that I'm friends with actually met. There's another way. It's called getting out of your house. You can't be stuck in the house all the time and think you're gonna meet friends that way. You have to get out there. You have to meet people. You have to be extremely just involved in social life. That is a way to meet friends. And if you do have social anxiety, like I said, the internet is fantastic fantastic because it doesn't require you to go out. You just wanna be really organic in the way you meet your friends. And I will say from experience, you can meet someone and they can have their their life together seemingly from the outside and then you get to meeting them and you find out this person is batshit crazy. And I mean crazy. And I will give you advice on exactly how to deal with toxic, crazy type of friends. It's to cut them off. Do not feel bad for cutting people off. There's no good way of doing it. And I will not encourage, you know, um, giving people like this crazy elaborate talk with closure and all of that, no, you just cut them off, okay? You don't owe anybody anything. And if somebody is toxic to your life, to your mental health, goodbye. When it comes to people nowadays, if I feel like they are kind of getting to a point where they're becoming toxic towards me, which I've been there, I haven't had that happen to me in a long time, but I've been there and I will say that it happens. There have been plenty of people that I've come in contact with who you know, were really normal and nice when I first met them and then they kind of became weird and crazy and I genuinely got to a point where I didn't even really give them an explanation why I wasn't speaking to them anymore and I don't care because you know why? They were confrontational and when somebody's confrontational, there's no reasoning with them. When you can't reason with people, there's no reason to give them closure, they're crazy. And I would say that for your mental health and maybe even for your physical health, you never know who will actually kill you in your sleep. It's best to just part ways from friendships that give you a stomach ache. Okay, I wanna talk about trust because I think this is a super important topic when it comes to friendships, especially as an adult. So my advice would be this, you should always trust your good friends, right? Like, why wouldn't you? But I will say that you don't need to tell them every fine tooth detail about your life. 
why are you sharing about you and your boyfriend's fight last night? Why are you telling them about how bad your boss is and how you want to kill them? Why are you telling them about the fact that you're, you know, empty in your bank account and you're broke as a joke? You can't be telling everybody every fine tooth detail about your life. You're giving people ammo. It's not always bad people who air out your dirty laundry. Sometimes people will tell other people harmlessly and then you're going to be pissed. It's just the way it works. So I would say don't give anybody anything to gossip about. It's your business and it shouldn't be something that they share with others. So if you don't want the secret getting out, then you don't let it be known that it even happened. But I will say that's kind of how it goes. The second you say a secret to someone, it's no longer a secret. And remember that every time you do that. All right, let's talk about that one thing that people hate talking about. And it's about boyfriends. Now, you're probably like, what are you talking about, girl? What I'm talking about is Everybody has a friend where you probably don't like their boyfriend. And this has been a common theme in my life growing up. I'm actually very lucky that all of my friends that are in relationships for the most part, I actually really like their partners, which has kept it extremely healthy. But if you don't like people's partners, you either need to do one of two things. You either need to keep it to yourself or distance yourself from the partner. Now, what I mean by this is you don't need to do group gatherings together. Just spend time with your friend when they have a free chance to spend time alone. I do think it's best if you get along with your friend's partner and if it's become a point where the person is just so disgusting that you can't put up with it anymore, then you have to part ways from the friendship and it hurts. It sucks to have to leave behind a friendship because their boyfriend or girlfriend doesn't get along with you or your boyfriend and girlfriend. But you do have to side with your partner and you do have to side with yourself if it's becoming toxic and it's becoming just not healthy and this partner is either abusive to your friend or mean to you or just inappropriate you have to part ways from the friendship and it does suck but it's the way it goes and I'm just giving you that advice things that you probably shouldn't tolerate in friendships when you're older is one somebody who overly criticizes you now I have pretty thick skin when it comes to my friendships because I want a friend who's gonna tell it to me straight I don't want somebody who's gonna walk on eggshells around me and not tell me how they feel but if it's becoming so critical to the point where they're just like looking for anything you need to just exit the friendship because there could be something deeper going on there they could be jealous of you they could maybe secretly hate you and that is not what you want in a friendship you don't want somebody who maybe secretly has a vendetta with you I don't know it could be anything and I genuinely think that somebody who just overly critiques you and it's not even funny it's just mean you just need to stop being friends with them a friend who embarrasses you in public or in general is also someone that you shouldn't be friends with I think that first of all you should never be embarrassed of your friends so if you are there's an issue there. And what maybe warrants embarrassment? Somebody who's too inappropriately loud in public to the point where they just seem out of control. Somebody who, you know, says some very inappropriate details about you to a guy that you're talking to. Anything that warrants you to feel a little bit embarrassed, that is not a friend that you want because again, there could be something deeper going on there. They could maybe have it out for you. They maybe, you know, want to embarrass you. They think it's funny to see you, you know, like just being uncomfortable. Some people like that and it's not nice. I also don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to be friends with somebody who's on your level. It can get really exhausting after years and years and years of being friends with people who just don't seem to catch up and it's starting to become weird. Like your levels in life are so different that you almost have nothing in common anymore. So again, there's nothing wrong with wanting somebody to be on your level, even if it's your mental level. Not everyone needs to be on your financial level for you to be friends with them because financials aren't everything. Financials don't equal wisdom. They don't equal, you know, success always. And I do think that it's okay to not be on someone's financial level and still be friends with them. But if they're just not on your level at all, no, honey. Somebody who's rude and flaky. Now, the reason why I'm going to say that being flaky is just warranted of not being friends with someone is because, you know, flaky means you are inconsistent. It means that you're irresponsible. It means that you just don't care. And if you don't care about being on time to be friends with me and hang out with me, 
then why are we even friends in the first place? Being flaky is rude. And after the fourth time, you're like, okay, girl, when are you gonna actually show up? It's becoming rude at this point. And I do think that you should cut off friends who just don't show up for you. Gossiping can be fun to some people. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Like me and my girlfriends, we shoot shit every once in a while. We talk about people every once in a while, but it's, it's always in good fun. But if somebody is just gossiping to the degree where it can be hurtful to the other person or to the person that they're talking about, and it just seems very just in mean spirit. You don't want to be friends with somebody like that because they're probably talking about you like that too. So I definitely think that it's important to cut the gossiping to a minimum and find someone who, instead of talking so much crap about people all the time, wants to lift people up. Again, like I said, I'm very realistic and I understand that girls do gossip, it's just the way it is, but if it's becoming harmful, hurtful, or just super mean about the other person, you can't be friends with them. You need to set boundaries for people. You need to kind of let people know exactly where you're at in this friendship. You don't want anybody to feel like you are not treating them how they want. And I definitely think that you should set these boundaries very early on in the friendship so that nobody has hurt feelings. You don't want somebody to be bottling up an emotion about you and then eventually it comes out and you're like, wait, I didn't even know you felt this way. So I definitely think that setting boundaries is super healthy and it's a way to kind of have, you know, specific expectations for each other and to kind of know where you're at in your friendship. I definitely think this is important because, you know, everyone has their boundaries. Everyone has their things that make them tick. And, you know, maybe somebody's more sensitive to something that you're not sensitive about, but now that you know, you're not gonna hurt their feelings about it. And I do think that that is extremely important and a way to just, not hurt anybody's feelings and not make anybody feel like they are not welcome or loved in your life. And lastly, I wanna say to not compete with your friends. It's a blessing to have friends that are doing well and you should never be offended, hurt, or feeling insecure when your friends are going through nice moments. When it's not your time, you know, congratulate your friends and be there for them. It's not something that you should be pressed about. So competing is a no-no and that's just a way to start very unhealthy, toxic friendships. And if you ever feel like somebody that you're friends with just makes you feel like you have to compete with them, again, part ways, it's not a healthy friendship. Everyone should be happy for everyone. I hope after this video, you guys have more of an understanding of where you and your friends should be in your life kind of moving forward. I know for me, it took a long time for me to really see what kind of friend I wanted. I didn't know if I wanted somebody to be super hands-on with me or somebody who was just more of a good friend when I needed them. And that's kind of what I like now. I like someone who's there for me when I need them, not on top of my life, not making me feel suffocated, but you know, somebody that I know if I reach out to them, they're gonna answer me that day and it won't be awkward or weird. You want your friendships to be effortless. You wanna be able to pick back where you left off and that's the way it should be. It shouldn't be hard, it shouldn't be difficult, it shouldn't feel like work. And it should just be a really happy time in your life where you just feel like, okay, we're both grinding, we're both successful, we're both happy, we both love each other and we know when and when not to be around each other. Okay guys, this is a completed look. I hope you enjoyed it. I honestly have done this makeup look a million times and it usually comes out better. When you're talking about friends and doing your makeup, it's just really hard. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned a lot and hopefully you guys can find some good quality, healthy friendships. I'm wishing that for you in 2021. We're cutting out all toxicity. And yeah guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys. Mwah.